morning. Morning. Hello, I'm Carol Montgomery, and on behalf of my colleagues, we are deeply grateful to those who brought this study to its completion. All of us are one fall or one cancer away from leading a totally different life. For some, it may be a chronic illness, pain, or mobility issue that determines whether the quality of one's life is merely an interruption or a downhill disaster gaining momentum. It is true, our bodies change as we age, but should aging lead to a loss of balance, pain, or injury? What if we could significantly impact 40 plus years of poor posture and bad movement habits that have resulted in strains and changes in one's physiology? What if there was a way to easily improve weight shifting between the feet during walking? as the inability to walk well and independently is a game changer in a person's quality of life. It was the musing of these questions and the successes achieved by our students that inspired us to conduct this pilot study. What was the intervention that made a significant difference in the quality of life of 23 people with the mean age of 73? Bones for Life, a relatively new somatic-based educational program. In this pilot study, we asked ourselves what are the physical and psychological benefits, if any, that this program had to offer to the geriatric population. We have three objectives today. First, we will define somatic education and bones for life. Second, we'll summarize the four key findings of the pilot study. And finally, we want to help you understand why we think a somatic approach to exercise matters. Somatic education gives people access to information, partially cognitive, but mainly experiential about their embodied habits. There are three branches of somatic education. The third one, somatic movement, is the fundamental core of the Bones for Life intervention. Think of somatic movement education as a systems view of human functioning, based not on a medical treatment or therapeutic intervention. It is not something that is done to you. Simply, it's about learning your highly individualized movement habits rather than just receiving treatment like isolated strength or balance training or stretching. Somatic movement education invites examination and a way of experiencing connection, really understanding how a set of parts and subparts when working together perform a common function. Now, what exactly is Bones for Life? Created by Ruthie Alon, Bones for Life is based on the somatic movement educational approach of Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais. A Bones for Life certified teacher or train, trainer leads participants in verbally guided movement sequences or processes. These movements are done slowly and with exploratory intention. Many of the movements are modeled after primal patterns of locomotion, such as creeping and crawling. Activities are completed in various positions, such as lying on the back, sitting with unilateral weight shifting, and bouncing on heels. Props, such as rollers and a strip of cloth or small hand weights, facilitate the development of controlled resistance. Instruction in unusual or different movement activities are directed toward developing an aligned, upright posture for the purpose of transmitting pressure through the body that is proportional to functional demand and with the least amount of joint shear and extraneous muscular effort. The subjects in this study were randomized into two groups. Group one received the intervention for six weeks, while group two was assigned to a six-week wait list. Each group underwent pre and post quantitative and qualitative testing. The purpose of the wait period was to exclude any learning effects from the pretest. It also allowed the subjects in group two to continue their regular activities, such as walking, swimming, tai chi, zumba, and weightlifting. Group 2 was retested prior to their Bones for Life intervention, and no significant changes were found in their physical performance measures. Each week, the Bones for Life movement processes and discussions centered around themes, such as what you see lifted, listed here. So far, we have defined somatic education and Bones for Life, a form of movement education that gives people awareness and access to their highly 
individualized movement habits. Let's move on to our next objective, summarizing the four key findings of the study. Here are the physical and quality of life measures that were demonstrated the most sensitivity to change, the 360 degree turn test, the 20 second step test, the SF36 health survey, and the qualitative data analyzed from the post-intervention interview. Let's have a closer look at each finding. Both physical performance tests were time for speed. The 360 degree turn involves turning around in a full circle, pausing, and turning a full circle in the other direction. The 20 second step test involves standing on one leg while placing the entire foot of the opposite leg on a step as many times as possible in 20 seconds. We were surprised by these test results because both participants with the lowest level and the highest level of function demonstrated improvement. We asked ourselves why. By its nature or design, Bones for Life challenges long-standing, inefficient, and poor movement patterns. Could learning and practicing elements involved in transitional movements be the key difference that significantly impacted our subjects? Some examples of these transitional movements were moving down and up from the floor, going from sit to stand using a spiraling motion, turning, the lateral exploration of weight shifting and weight bearing through different aspects of the feet. Also a common element in both tests was the ability to stand on one leg. Remember, Bones for Life does not target specific balance exercises. It uses novel movement activities. We think it was these movement activities that allowed subjects to sustain a smaller base of support without an increase in postural sway or musculoskeletal demand. Another contributing factor was improvement in lower extremity alignment patterns. We postulate that alignment patterns changed because of the guided novel movement activities. Here are some examples of these activities. Spiling movements with eye-hand coordination. Pressing the foot on the wall. Facilitating patterns that involve trunk side bending and trunk rotation. The third key finding of this study was revealed during the analysis of the SF36 Health Survey. It's a questionnaire that profiles one's functional health and well-being. Divided into two broad components, physical and mental, it is further subdivided into eight domains. Significant improvement was seen in two domains, vitality and general health, and also a strong tendency was observed in the mental health domain. Let's look at the first improvement. Vitality. It is defined as a measure of one's energy. High scores indicate feeling full of energy all or most of the time. High mental health scores indicate feeling peaceful, happy, calm. The SF36 began to validate and quantify a commonly reported response that participants in a Bones for Life class describe a confident sense of well-being and a feeling of vitality and happiness. Ruthie Alon, originator of Bones for Life, refers to this phenomenon as biological optimism. Now, the second improvement was even more interesting. Participants in this study perceived that their general health got better. General health domain is defined as the measure of one's overall health, including current and prior health, and one's resistance to illness. Improvement in this domain was thought-provoking because subjects self-reported a wide range in their general health, including past medical histories, reported activity levels, and diagnoses. Regardless of this diversity, positive effects were seen among participants in a very short time. So we asked ourselves, how in six weeks could general health perception improve when medical history, diagnoses, and activity levels remained the same? A precept of somatic movement education includes strategies to cultivate awareness, generating a state of mindfulness. The Bones for Life intervention revealed long-standing habitual and inefficient movement patterns. 
When subjects improved their movement patterns, it increased their level of function. As function improved, they felt healthier. The final key finding of the study was observed in the post-intervention interview where subjects were asked four questions. In the first question, 50% of the subjects reported having poor balance prior to the study. After receiving the Bones for Life intervention, 90% of the subjects reported improvement in their balance, such as what you see listed here. However, improved balance was not the primary benefit of the class. Functional gains and carryover into daily activities was the number one benefit. Subjects stated it was easier to get out of a chair, reach into cabinets, climb stools, change light bulbs, hang clothes. It was easier to get down and up from the floor. Also, there was an unpredicted carryover as subjects reported improvements in recreational activities such as playing golf, noted improved stance and swing, and better ability to concentrate during play. They also reported improvement in their walking programs, such as increased speed, confidence, and improved postural alignment. Finally, the last objective, why a somatic approach to exercise matters. In this pilot study, maybe the only difference between quality function and dysfunction is that quality function is primarily informed by organized movement patterns that explore some of these qualities you see listed here. Somatic-based programs challenge students. They ask them to be full participants in learning movements that confront their quality and their ability to be aware, to think, and to use problem-solving skills to improve balance and self-care. Somatic movement education programs are where function improves through the improvement of body awareness. Thus, movement coordination and the collaborative functions of the skeletal, muscular, and nervous systems are changed. Even when people have an organic problem or disease, it just may be possible that the field of somatics can help them deal with how they respond to their problem and therefore impact their quality of life. We like to share a video clip that captures the human emotion, significance, and impact of the Bones for Life intervention. I sort of had a hard time getting up off the floor, you know, but then I learned, hey, there's an easy way to do this. I've watched my posture more. At first, I was watching it. Now, I'm more doing it unconsciously. I tend to have more confidence in my balance. I found that I was able to reach farther when I'm hanging clothes on the line. I had this ballet thing where you walked one foot in front of the other, and now I have a gait. And it's so much better. The Integrative Learning Center conducted a pilot study using Bones for Life with adults over 65. After attending class once a week for six weeks, these are some of their experiences. So we started binding this point of power in the foot that helps us unweight and then lift our leg for the next one. You know, I'm 65, so I'm, I know there's going to be times when certain parts of my body might deteriorate and I want to remain active. The techniques of going down to the floor um, was, you know, need to, uh, to learn. I usually would wind up bouncing down and just, my weight would just cave in, but now I'm much more smooth, so that's good. One of the fun things about this kind of an approach is you'll become curious about what it is you do and how you do it, and you'll start to notice it. Things that you just been taking for granted, you'll start to notice it. This was, this was something different. This helped me more with the posture and with being able to get up and down and uh, the easiest way to do it. It was many faceted and uh, it covered a wide range of areas which was great because I found out that I had a lot of things that bothered me that I didn't really know about until we got into the exercise. 
and realized it need, I needed to be strengthened or stretched or moved and all those things work together. And so therefore, I was moving better because things were working together. And it helped my neighbor down the street. I pull out of my driveway and I'm going down the street. There he is on the sidewalk. And I thought, oh no. He's fallen? Yes, he fell. So I pull the car over to the curb and I go over to him and I said, can you get up? And he said, I don't know. And then I sat in the grass beside him and I said, this is what I want you to do. And I told him about moving his leg and his arm and his head. And I hurry up and I jumped up and I got behind him. And am I allowed to say this, what I told him? Sure. I says, make sure your ass is up in the air when I grab you. <laughs> And I got behind him and I lifted him up and there was the two of us, we were lifted up. Or do you notice more weight towards the right foot, like you lean more on the right leg, right foot, like it makes a better impression on the ground or on the left foot, or is it really even? And so we start with just very basic awareness cues that for many of you will not seem like a big deal, but to uh, this particular group of seniors was a really big deal. Every time they saw, felt something else, they were just totally shocked at, at learning something new about their body. And then we're going to start to lift the heels very gently, almost imperceptibly, and let them land. We're just going to start to put a little bit of pressure, ground force, up through the system. But we're going to make it a little bit more community oriented and also to help us manage our breath. So we're going to do that in the, on a rhythm. And the rhythm is going to be this light, quick rhythm with a vocalization. So let's do the vocalization together. And it's P-U-M, P-U-M, pum pum. Pum pum. Pum pum. Pum pum. Pum pum. Pum pum. pum, 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 pum. And then add your heels. Pum pum. Pum pum. Pum pum. Pum pum. Pum pum. Pum pum. pum, pum. So something very basic, and then we come back to noticing already if the weight feels distributed a little bit differently in your feet. Like something's not quite the same as it was just a few seconds ago. And from there we would build different forms of alignment so that they could learn to align their low back, align their neck without um, active muscular effort that you might think of. And then again we would come back to this bouncing on heels and sending pressure through the system, gradually training uh, the muscles of the front and the back body to rebalance themselves and allow more alignment in um, walking and standing and doing. That's a very sweet little easy process of uh, bouncing on heels. Thank you so much. On behalf of my colleagues, Cynthia Allen, Sherry Farber, and Mark Farber, we thank you for your attention and we invite further comments or questions. Please contact us at our website at integrativelearningcenter.org. Thank you.